the city of Denver. Uh, Population-wise, the, the city itself is about 600,000 residents. Um, our metro area, we uh, estimate it to be about 3 million people uh, in the front range in Colorado. Uh, the city of Denver is a very influential uh, municipal organization. It's a very progressive organization, thanks to our mayor, Mayor Hickenlooper. Uh, he has made it uh, a key part of his strategy to run government as openly as, and as efficiently as he possibly can. Some of the talent that he's brought in to his administration at the cabinet level and at the agency head level uh, has a lot of great public and private sector experience, and that's allowed us to develop a strategy that takes advantage of just the best business thought as opposed to any kind of uh, limiting thought when it comes to solving our problems. So it's a wonderful city, wonderful organization to be a part of, um, and yes, transparency in government and efficiency in government is always at the top of our agendas. Prior CIO was uh, Michael Kaitis. He's now CIO of the state of Colorado. When he joined the city of Denver, he was the first CIO in the history of the city. He led an initiative with the mayor to do our first IT consolidation. So in June 2005, Mayor Hickenlooper passed an executive order that said all IT organizations are going to be under one roof. So for the last five years, we've been taking that new organization and we've started to look at how do we make it more efficient, how do we break down some of the barriers, and how do we start paying off some of the technical debt that we've had, because you have to realize for the last, no, any number of years, as long as IT was around at the city, uh, there's over 60 independent agencies at the city. That meant there were over 60 different ways of doing business, promoting IT, creating systems. So now under one organization, what we've been trying to do, <clears throat> is find some fundamental changes in how we deploy systems, how we make decisions on which systems we acquire and deploy, what kind of enterprise architecture we want to promote, and then what kind of uh, true changes, fundamental changes we want to make in how we support our citizens and our business agencies. And that's all basically come together in a strategy related to how we choose those systems and the platforms that we're building those systems on and Alfresco was a perfect natural progression within that strategy to help prove out many of those concepts. And as I mentioned in my presentation earlier, it's been a very, very successful project and a very, very successful fit in terms of proving out a lot of the concepts that were core tenets of our strategy. 17 systems are probably of all different shapes and sizes. There's probably major uh, or there are major systems that hold millions of records and an incredible amount of metadata, all the way down to a SharePoint site somewhere that a couple of agencies are using with a few Word and Excel and PowerPoint documents and everything in between. <clears throat> so the contract project that we worked on was specifically for the auditor's office and the controller's office. Uh, a nice benefit, or more than a nice benefit, a key benefit of this project was the controller's office assumed a lot of the responsibilities from the auditor's office in that process in terms of managing uh, and making sure that we have a good record of the contracts in the city. The legacy system had very poor search capability. It had very poor performance. Uh, it really felt like a system that was at end of life. And we took all these things into account and we said, let's make it a much richer user experience and at the same time, let's prove out some of the core fundamental tenets of our new technology approach. And those two mesh together very well. We were pushing for uh, more enterprise solutions or extending enterprise services and enterprise solutions, not replicating processes that were already existing in other enterprise systems. We were pushing centralized services like uh, document repository, like identity management. And we were also promulgating the benefits of open source. And all of those things met at the right time, at the right place, uh, as well as at the right cost to replace our legacy system for the auditor and the controller. I think as we went through the project, uh, most of the challenges we had were making sure that our staff had the right skills. We had uh, staff that was pretty limited in terms of their Java expertise. Mm -hmm. We had some pushback in terms of bringing in an open source platform that was going to be seen as an enterprise platform. On the back end, we were promoting and we continue to promote a virtualized environment. So Alfresco fit very well in our new uh, Blade server platform that we chose, in our Red Hat 
uh, environment that we were rolling out with those Blade servers and with MySQL. So together with the open source database, with the open source software itself, we have to overcome some fear. But I think technically the biggest challenge was making sure that our staff understood that we were going to be starting to develop and deploy in a Java environment. <clears throat> and also from a process standpoint, we were just starting to roll out Scrum. So we had to get people very comfortable with what it meant to run sprints, what it meant to be really done at the end of a sprint, what it meant to involve um, business users in those sprints as well. So I think, uh, as always on these projects, there are technical difficulties. You can usually overcome them. The people side is what always takes uh, the, more, the heavier lifting. And in our case, it wasn't any different. I think with all these projects, the, the most important piece is making sure that you're aligned with your business user making sure that you're aligned with the strategy of your organization. All organizations are gonna have uh, either explicit or implicit goals that they're trying to achieve. So make sure that you're aligned with the strategy, make sure that you're aligned with whatever core mission you're trying to accomplish, and then together with your business users, make sure that you're establishing some kind of partnership to make sure that you're successful. Technical issues, there's always a way, and usually there's always a way to, to find a, a successful resolution to them. I found over my career and over, with my experience, it's much tougher to get the people side figured out than it is to get the technical side figured out. So make sure that you have clear buy-in, make sure that your leadership team is understanding uh, of what you're trying to get done, why the approach is different, and then make sure that you have that partnership established so that you have uh, some very clear goals together with your user community. And the other major piece of advice I'd say is um, with these enterprise type projects, they're difficult and they can fail very easily. There's a lot of different external factors that can cause you to fail. So I'm a big believer in more of an agile approach, more of an iterative approach, plan a quick win, and then start building from there. So I think though, those would be two of the most important lessons learned for any project, but specifically for what we did with Alfresco.